Thank you so much, Rabinder. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Fairfax Library, for having us. And welcome, 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 everybody to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. This is actually going to be a series with the Fairfax County once a month. So check the website, check your emails. And again, thank you for being here today. Let me tell you what we're going to do today, and then I'll go back and I'll introduce myself a little bit, okay? Um, oh, you know what, before I even go through that, I want to say something, you know, there's research that I've done that when we multitask, we literally experience less joy. And I don't know about you, but my life is all about let's find the most joy as possible. So with that in mind, and let's not multitask, let's get our phones, put them on silent, close out of all of those browsers and be with me 100%. And I promise you are going to experience a lot of joy during our time together today. So if you're in, go ahead and type I'm in in the chat. Go ahead and type I'm in in the chat. If you're in to be with me 100%, everybody type I'm in in the chat. Let me see some I'm ins. I know that I've got some 20 some people in here. So let me see a whole bunch of I'm in so I know who I'm talking, who I'm talking to. Very, very, very good. Oh, I'm in from Fairfax, she has to say. I love it. Absolutely love it. And okay, well, let me tell you what we're going to make today, and then we're going to go and make it. We are going to make simple turkey breast. People think turkey is just for Thanksgiving. And let me tell you, when you make this turkey breast the way I'm teaching you, you will make this probably on your menu once a week. So simple, so delicious, and perfect for, for lunches, for, for dinners for snacks, whatever you want to make for. Then we're going to make this beautiful, what did I call this salad? I think we call, here we go. Avocado, spinach, strawberry, honey mustard, vinaigrette salad. I know, very long title. I need to shorten my titles. And then my favorite thing that we're going to make today because I'm a dessert girl, almond joy. When was the last time that you ate an almond joy? and you probably ate it going, oh my gosh, this is so good, but it's so bad for me. Who loves Almond Joys? Type Almond Joy in the chat. If you love Almond Joys, type Almond Joy in the chat. We're making Almond Joys and we're gonna make them super healthy. So you do not need to feel not one ounce of guilt, not one ounce of guilt. You're going to be guilt-free and eating Almond Joy. So if you love, uh, I got a couple of Almond Joys. Very good, very good, love it. Well, I'd like to introduce myself at this time. My name is Tina McDermott. I call myself the lazy inspirational chef. I'm a speaker, I'm also a weight loss coach, 20 years. It floors me every single time I say that. My mission in my life is so clear to me, and that is to help as many people in this world that is humanly possible, live a life that's full of health, full of vibrancy, and free from DIEs, diets, because we don't want to die. We want to live it. We want to be free from dis-ease. We want to be free from all of those things, and we want to live a life that's healthy, vibrant, and full of joy. If you want joy in your life, type joy in the chat. That's why I love Almond Joys, right? Type joy in the chat if you just want more joy in your life. I don't think we could ever get enough joy. Type joy in the chat if you just want more joy in your life. Yes, only two people want more joy. The rest of you, nothing. <laughs> yes, that's it, joy. Very good, so excited. Yeah, um, I, I can go on and on talking about myself, but whatever, let's get cooking. Let's get cooking, let's get cooking. We're gonna start with the turkey breast. Why? Because it starts here. It all starts here. This has got to go in the oven for about 40 some minutes. So I need to get this going. What I did is I made myself a dry rub. I'll talk a little bit more about this if you want a little bit later. And what I do is I get the recipe and I double, triple, quadruple it. And then I know how many teaspoons to put on each uh, turkey breast. So you can get a larger jar. And I did onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, what is this? Thyme. Uh, paprika, oregano, and some rosemary. Now, let's talk about rosemary. My husband calls them sticks. He does not like rosemary because he, he, he says they're sticks and they stick in my teeth. I don't like them, he says to me. 
So I have a little trick. I get my little mortal and pestle and I smash my rosemary with my mortal and pestle. Well, I, I have a bigger one that does a little bit better of a job. But so if your husband or your family does not like the sticks, go ahead and um, grind it up in a mortal and pestle. Okay, grind it up in a mortal and pestle. So now what I'm gonna do, I think this is, oh my gosh, I forgot. I'm supposed to write on the lid how many teaspoons per turkey breast. And this looks like it is two servings. Now I have to tell you something about my life. I am literally, my parents are literally off the boat Italian. My mom grew up on a farm with dirt floors and she learned how to cook when she came to America from my grandma, who had been here only about five years, also from Italy. And so they didn't have a lot of stuff. They didn't have a lot of measuring cups. They didn't have a lot of all of that stuff. So she did everything al occhio, al occhio. Who knows what I mean when I say al occhio? Does anybody know what I mean by that? Oh, you want my kitchen, that's funny. You want, that's funny. Al occhio, who knows what I mean by al occhio? Eyeball, yes, thank you. Somebody figured it out. So I'm gonna do it. I do a lot of things al occhio. Sometimes I measure them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I measure them, sometimes I don't. What I did in my dry rub, I put some olive oil. Now we're about to get our hands dirty. We're about to get our hands dirty. I'm gonna turn, and this is my trick to you, either use rubber gloves, which I should have gotten some rubber gloves out today, or Turn the hot water on before you start so that you can get your hands washed. So I'm gonna get a little dirty here. I'm gonna get my paring knife, get that ready. Get my hands underneath the skin of this beautiful turkey breast. Keep the skin on, don't take that skin off. I poked a couple of holes with my paring knife and I'm going to rub this dry rub that I put olive oil in. So I don't know why we call it a dry rub anymore because it's got olive oil. And um, if you wanted to, you could also get raw garlic and shove the raw garlic into those holes that you just made. And I'm gonna liberally just rub all around my turkey breast with my rub. Now, look guys, the world is your oyster. Remember, I call myself the lazy inspirational chef. And what I mean by that is if you don't like my spice mix, then use whatever you like. I know that this spice mix goes, goes over very, very, very well with my family. They love it. They love the paprika. They love, I, I could put a little more, some cayenne pepper in here, which I did not. My husband loves the cayenne, so I could put a little cayenne pepper. I'm gonna go wash my hands and put the dirty stuff that touched the raw meat right into the sink, okay? I'll be right back. drives me nuts when I watch cooking, cooking shows and I see people touch raw meat and then they go and touch other things. I'm like, wash your hands. Teach people to wash your hands. Wash them thoroughly. You notice how I turned the hot water on so I made sure that I had nice hot water to wash my hands. All right. And you're probably wondering, what are you doing over there? What are you doing? I am. <laughs> I'm getting some dessert ready, believe it or not. I, uh, I'm a little crazy when it comes to dessert. I love, love, love dessert. And there's this one restaurant that I would go to when I lived in New Jersey. And I would always get their tiramisu. Who here loves tiramisu? Put tira, if you can even spell it, put tiramisu in the chat. I put a little coconut oil in with some chocolate chips and I'm just heating it up in a double boiler so that that's ready. So anyhow, every time we would go to this restaurant. One time we went and I loved their tiramisu. Got there, ate dinner. After dinner, I'm like, okay, I'll have some tiramisu. And he goes, oh, we're all out. I was so bummed. So now every time I go to a restaurant, I make sure I order my dessert ahead of time. I don't always get dessert. I'm kind of teasing on that. But, but for, that, for that place, I'd always say, you saved me some tiramisu because they made it just as good as my family made it. 
Not that I couldn't make it myself, but then I'd make the whole batch and eat the whole batch. And nobody likes tiramisu or just nobody knows how to spell it. Okay, if you like tiramisu, put a one in the chat. If you don't like tiramisu, put a two in the chat. If you don't know what tiramisu is, put a three in the chat. Let me see it, let me see it. Put a one, two, or a three. You like tiramisu, okay. Most people probably couldn't spell it. Tiramisu is an Italian dessert made with these cookies, uh, lady fingers, and dipped in uh, coffee layered in this cream, this wonderful cream. So you get lady fingers dipped in coffee, cream, another layer of lady fingers dipped in coffee, cream. And all right, I'm not talk, telling you what I'm doing here. You can simply get this turkey breast and throw it right in the oven just the way I did it. However, however, when I make a whole turkey, I always stuff my turkey with certain things. And I love the flavor of onions in with my turkey. My husband absolutely loves cooked carrots. So why not take this opportunity to throw some cooked carrots in, or throw some carrots in there so that they can cook. You can do large chunks, you can do small chunks. It doesn't matter. Now, look, I can do this on the cutting board or I can, I scrubbed my carrots, by the way, keep the skin on. Don't waste your time taking the skin off. There's lots of vitamins in there. Just get organic carrots and you're good to go. Uh, they talk about consistency of cut, that everything should be the same size. I don't have time for that. My mom taught me how to cut towards myself, towards my thumb. Not once have I ever cut my thumb. But if you're worried about that, then you can simply chop it on a chopping board, okay? Now, who can finish this sentence? A dull knife is a, who can finish the sentence? A dull knife is a, who can finish the sentence? A dull knife, come on people, help me out here. A dull knife is a dangerous knife, yes. Get your knives sharpened. I get mine sharpened once or twice a year and I hone them in between. I, for some reason, just adore orange on turkey. Don't ask me why. So I'm, I had these little mandarin oranges that, my husband got tired of eating. I think he got tired of peeling them and eating. So I'm just squeezing them and putting them on there. Back to the knife, I can tell my knives are getting a little dull and a dull knife is a dangerous knife. So get them sharpened, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon on there as well. So I'm gonna, how do you get more juice out of a lemon? Who knows how do you get more juice out of a lemon? Who knows, what am I doing? Who says you don't? use muscles in the kitchen. You'll use muscles in the kitchen. Um, where do I sharpen my knives? There is, uh, okay, I'll be honest. I'm a daddy's little girl. My parents are up in New Jersey. So my dad has a little knife sharpener and he sharpens my, my knives for me. So I have to bring them up there next time I see them and he'll sharpen them for me. My dad's a barber, literally one of those old fashioned barbers. And once again, this is just lemon. I'm squeezing it over my turkey breast and just throw the lemon in there, no big deal. If you like potatoes, put potatoes in there, but I'm not gonna go to that extent. And this is ready to go in the oven. My turkey breast was about 2.8 pounds and you should cook your turkey breast 375, 20 minutes a pound. So this has gotta go in for about 45 minutes. That means it will be done by the time class is done. Ouch, I'm burning myself. Caitlin, remind me to take that out right at the end of class so I don't forget because, yep, I tend to forget things. I'll use this at the end if I want to add a little bit more lemon on there. Um, I, okay, so you can use a knife sharpener, but the knife sharpener literally, my dad uses, uh, he's a barber, so he's always sharpening his tools his scissors, his uh, blades and such, and he'll sharpen my knives and he has a little machine that does it. A knife sharpener really hones a knife. It doesn't seriously sharpen a knife, okay? So it's really important that you get your knives sharpened and that you hone it with one of those home uh, knife sharpeners, okay? If you start to feel your knife getting a little dull, a little hard to get through things, you can, you can easily slip that knife and hurt yourself. On that note, I want to make sure that you know how to hold a knife. 
do most who, who mo if, put a one in the chat if most of you hold a knife like so with your finger on the top or all fingers on the blade put a one in the chat if okay one in the chat if your fingers on the top of the knife two in the chat if your fingers are all on the blade like so yeah fingers all on the blade like so got it now i'm going to show you a way to hold the knife because even if you have all of your fingers on the blade and say the knife isn't sharp or say you've got something that's a little uh, lops whatever you could easily slip you can easily slip that knife and cut yourself so i'm going to show you a way to hold a knife i want you to put your index finger on this side of the blade not on top on this side of the blade i want you to put your thumb on that side of the blade caitlin do a close up here and there you go let's do it right here so index finger on one side of the blade thumb on the other side of the blade and your ring finger is butted up against the back of the blade here so now when you go to cut you see how i'm trying to bend the knife sideways it won't slip here it'll slip here does not slip do you see how i'm holding that okay and then you're going to chop like so all right, just want to make sure that you guys got that. Thank you, Caitlin. What's next? What is next? I think next we need to talk about almond joys, but my hands have the lemon and onion on them. So I'm going to get rid of the onion and lemon flavor and just wash them up a little bit. Oh, there's a piece of carrot on my floor. Let's talk about dessert. Who here wants to talk about dessert? Put dessert in the chat. If you want to talk dessert next, Let's get our dessert ready to rock and roll. Put dessert in the chat. You're left-handed so you can cut away from me. I cut towards myself. Yeah, I cut, I cut towards myself all the time. Like, like I was saying before, I cut towards myself. I forgot, I had some celery. You could have put celery in with the turkey, but I don't always do that, but I just had it out. So I just put it in there. Yeah, so let's talk about dessert. Let's talk about dessert. This is... A, a double boiler. I melted chocolate chips. The reason why I'm talking dessert next, because they need to go in the freezer to just harden up a little bit after I do this. So hopefully they'll be done by the end. Okay. Hopefully they'll be done by the end. Now I'm just going to move some things around here. So we have some space to do things. And what I did is I got a bag of chocolate chips. You can either get Lily's brand chocolate chips. It's sweetened with stevia. So the carbohydrate, the sugar load is much lower. Or these other ones called Enjoy Life. These are organic. They are amazing. Very, very, very low sugar. And they use regular cane sugar, not the other processed white stuff. So simply opened up the bag and I put it in my double boiler. If you don't have a double boiler, then you can simply get a glass jar and put the glass jar in the boiling water and just stir it up a little bit as it goes on, okay? Just keep your eye on it. Don't walk away if you're using the glass jar if you don't have a double boiler. You could melt them in the microwave as well. Just do them in 30 second increments. I also added a little bit of coconut oil in with the chocolate chips, just to make them a little bit more liquidy. Also, coconut oil is incredibly good for you. And I highly suggest that you eat coconut oil on the normal. Why? Is anybody, who here loves coconut? You love coconut, coconut oil and eat it on the norm. Put it in the chat, put coconut in the chat if you eat coconut on the norm. Yeah, coconut is antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, and it is one of the best foods that you can be eating, one of the best fats that you can be eating. Somebody say to me, says to, say, people say to me, well, it's a saturated fat, isn't that bad? And the answer is no. Sugar is much, much don't quote me on the number, but like probably a hundred times worse for you than a saturated fat like coconut oil. Okay. So coconut oil, this is Nutiva brand and it's an organic coconut oil that I get. Very good. I love Nutiva. So let me tell you what I did 
you know what, we have time. I'm going to make a whole nother batch of these and I'll show you how I did this. I'll show you how I did this and then we're going to melt it. You know what, let me, never mind. I'm going back and forth, aren't I? I'm going to do this whole thing backwards. I'm going to do the whole thing backwards because I want this to get in the refrigerator and hardened for you so I can show you these almond joy bars. And we're going to, if I have time, I'll show you how, to, how I made them. Food processor. I got shredded coconut, honey, vanilla. I did do a pinch of sea salt and some coconut oil. I put it all in the food processor. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. I want to get these in the fridge so that we can have a finished product and you can see them. Okay. And then I put them in this pan with a little parchment paper, smash them down. And then I put toasted almonds, just kind of slip the toasted almond in there. Now I can make these little bites or I can make them two bites. I think it's going to be easier to make them into two bites because I'm dipping them into the chocolate. The almond got in the way there. And once you get this rhythm down of how to do these, it won't be that difficult for you to get these done and get these in the freezer and ready for you and your family when you want dessert or a little something after dinner that is not laden with sugar, okay? Because this only has honey in it for sugar, only honey. And a little bit of the cane sugar is in the coconut chips or unless you get the lilies, coconut, uh, not coconut chips, chocolate chips, I meant to say. Now I got a tray ready that's gonna go in the freezer that is lined with parchment paper. You don't have to line it with parchment paper, but I will tell you that it will be so much easier if you do. So I'm just gonna grab my, get my fingers and I'm going to get a little messy. Why? Because life is messy. Life is messy and I'm gonna dip it into my chocolate and right onto my parchment paper. Oh, this one a little bit of, the coconut broke off, so we're just gonna add that later. And there we go. Again, you could have made these into little bites or you could have done it, done it exactly the way that I did it into two bites. So it's like a half of an Almond Joy bar. Half of an Almond Joy bar, there we go. Now, if you want to coat the whole thing in chocolate, go for it. My fingers are getting a little hot there though. Yeah, you can, you can dip the whole thing in chocolate or not. And these can be stored in the refrigerator or the freezer. It depends on how hot, I mean, how hot, how cold, my fingers are hot, how cold you want your, um, your desserts. Talk about multitasking, oh my gosh. In the kitchen, you definitely multitask and you get a lot of joy too. Who here loves to cook? Put a one in the chat if you just love to cook. I'm just drizzling a little chocolate on the top just to get a little extra on the top because I think it's pretty. Put a one in the chat if you just love to cook. Good. Now, some people love to bake and some people love to do savory. So if, you're, if you love sweets, put sweet in the chat. If you love to bake, or excuse me, if you like to cook savory, put savory in the chat. If you like to cook desserts, Put sweet in the chat. There we go. You know, no need to get too, too, too fancy with it. There we go. Good. Mostly, mostly sweet and some savory. I'm gonna put these in the freezer and then wash some chocolate off of my fingers. And we can remind me to take those out so to show people later, Caitlin, okay? Lots of reminders, Caitlin. Remember, life is messy. It's okay to get your hands into the mix when you're cooking. It's okay. I always have paper towels and dishcloths, everything ready. And then after I'm done cooking, they go right in the wash. They go right in the wash. Okay. Now, you want to see how I did the filling? We're going to do the filling right now. You guys ready? You guys ready? We're going to do the filling together. So you see how I made it. All right. You guys are having fun. Put fun in the chat. If you guys are having fun, put some fun 
in that chat box. Put some fun in that chat box. I had a capital F, capital U, and capital N. That's fantastic. I want to remind you of something, a couple of things. If you have any nutrition questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. If it applies to what we're making, that's great. And if it applies to something else, that's fine too. I may or may not answer it, but I'm teasing you. But you're welcome to ask me questions. You see, I have planned out what I'm making for you today, but people might need, need to be steered a different direction or they might have questions. By all means, ask me questions. I'm here for you today. I am all yours today, okay? Now, again, I know I did this a little backwards, but it's all good. It's all good. I want to show you the finished product. The first thing that I did is I got some raw almonds. I get almonds from unsalted from, I love Aldi's, and I toasted them. Don't just do them raw. The, the toasting brings up the, um, the flavor in almonds. And I have my little handy dandy little toaster oven over here. And this is my Pampered Chef bar pan. I really, really love cooking on, and also love cooking, like chopping things on wood. It helps me, it, ma it makes me feel like a cave woman. Like it really connects me to the earth for some reason, cooking on stone. And stoneware cooks very, very evenly, very evenly. And you can toast your oven, your nuts in the oven but I don't have time for that. I wanna walk away. Every time I toast them in the oven, I burn them. But this is how I do it. I put it right in the toaster oven. I put it on toast, dark, and turn it on. I walk away. They'll get toasted. Thrilled. Don't have to worry about it, right? Don't have to worry about it. Okay, next, let's make the rest of the filling. I'm going to get, you can get either unsweetened shredded coconut, already shredded, and I get this, this one is Let's Do Organic brand. I got this from My Organic Market. You can buy this online as well. They also sell them in coconut flakes. I love these coconut flakes. Sometimes I get a big fry pan. I throw them in with a little pinch of salt and a bunch of cinnamon. Don't leave the pan and just keep stirring them up until they get a little crispy. And now you have a delightful snack of coconut chips and you get that what? Who remembers? Anti what? Anti, huh? Who knows, who remembers? Who remembers? Anti, what is coconut? Anti what? Antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. All right, let's see. Somebody asked a question here. You've been drinking and cooking with non-fat milk for years. Now I'm seeing folks recommending whole milk same for Greek yogurt, which do you use? Peg, thank you very much for that question. Thank you for that question. Um, when America went non-fat, what they did is they took the fat out. If I'm not mistaken, was that like back in the 80s when that happened? I think it was back in the 80s. They took the fat out and they put the sugar in. I'm not saying that they did it with milk. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment but they took the fat out. They took, put the sugar in to make it taste good because the fat makes it taste good. And guess what happened to America? America got more and more and more obese. Okay. When it comes to milk, vitamin D that they put in milk can only be absorbed if it's in a fat. So non-fat milk fortified with vitamin D is an oxymoron. You cannot absorb that vitamin D. I have been teaching my clients for years to eat whole milk. Whole milk, much better for you. Eat less of it. No added sugar, especially if you're doing yogurts and such. Greek yogurt's fine. Just get the one that has fat in it. If you get the non-fat one, just know that it's processed that much more. And my philosophy on eating is eat foods that walk, fly, grow, or swim. And the closer to the way that Mother Nature produced the food, the better it is for us. The more that it has been processed, the worse it is for us. If you cannot get over the fact and, and eat whole milk, 
products, then get the non-fat milk, make positive that it doesn't have added sugar, and also make sure that you add a fat to it. So if you get a non-fat Greek yogurt, add some almond butter to it, add some avocado to it, add coconut butter to it, add something that is butter, wor I mean, that's um, fat worthy. Right. I hope that answered your question. I hope that answered your question. Um, now, did you see what I did? I have to use some honey for this and I don't want the honey to stick in my little measuring cup. So I sprayed it with an organic olive oil spray. A lot of people find those other sprays on the market that have propellants that have a rancid oil in them, I don't use them. They're terrible for you, okay? Even if it's just a little bit. Is a little bit of arsenic okay? No. So a little bit of rancid oil is not okay either. So get that spray, uh, that organic olive oil spray. That is the only spray that I use. And I only use it in certain cases, like when I make my egg bites and things like this. Very rare do I need it. Most of the time I use coconut oil and spread the coconut oil out. Okay, so I've got the honey in there and I think I need coconut oil for this as well. So we're gonna get coconut oil. Here's my coconut oil from before. And the spoon that I used before, it's probably, how much is it? How much coconut oil? Who is about a quarter cup of coconut oil? It says melted. But because it's warm now, it's like 80 degrees where I am. It's a little on the soft side. You see how soft that is? It's a little on the soft side. So I'm just going to put that in there. And remember, I do things al occhio. And it literally freaks my sister out when I do this. Because in baking, you're supposed to be precise. I don't have time for that. I'm just so used to doing things by eye. And... <laughs> Sometimes my husband complains. He goes, can't you follow a recipe? And I said, no, I have to do everything by eye. And I want to be inspired to do what I want to do, not necessarily what some a recipe teaches me to do, you know? Um, also with the honey, I chose to use the raw honey because the other honey that you buy has been pasteurized and the really good qualities, the immune boosting pro properties of honey have been cooked out. So I choose the raw honey. Yes, I'm cooking it, but I don't cook everything with my raw honey. Actually, no, I'm not cooking this. This is raw. I had to take a teaspoon out here. I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just going to find another teaspoon. Next, I'm going to put in a little bit of vanilla extract. Don't go cheap on your vanilla extract. The flavor profile of this organic vanilla extract, and this one is from flavor organics that I get from my organic market. The flavor profile difference between this and the cheap one I get from Aldi's is astounding. Test it out, test it out. Cause the, the other one is not real vanilla. It's artificial flavored. This one is real vanilla. When it comes to extracts in your almond joy bar, maybe, maybe, maybe you really like a pop of almond flavor. You could use an almond extract. Why not? Why not use an almond extract? Okay, I've got all the ingredients in there. And now I'm just going to pulse it up in my food processor. And I'll be back in just a moment. Now remember, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. And Peg, I want to know if I've really thoroughly answered your question or did that bring up more questions for you? Okay, I'm just pulsing, pulsing, pulsing. I used shredded coconut before. And the shredded coconut had more volume than the coconut flakes. So I'm just gonna put the rest of the bag of the coconut flakes in there. Don't judge me. Don't judge me for not measuring. It's all good. It's all good if you do. And you won't, it's all good. Pinch of salt, I always love sea salt. How did I know that it wasn't right? because the consistency was very different, it was much more liquidy, much more liquidy, and we didn't want that. I wanted a more of a solid consistency here.
2% milk is the same discussion as the whole milk, okay? You're not getting all the fat. If you're gonna do 2%, add some fat to it. But remember, it's processed even more. The other thing to look for in dairy, okay? The other thing to look for in dairy is make sure that it is RBGH free. RBGH stands for recumbent bovine growth hormone, recumbent bovine growth hormone. That is a genetically modified uh, organism that they put in the injection to the cows to help them produce more milk. The danger of the genetically modified organism is that it is um, it still has the pesticides that were applied to the crop and it transmits to the gut flora and that therefore it transmits to your body. Also, it's not natural for to make a cow produce more milk. It's just not natural. So either go organic, which you know doesn't have any, any RBGH, or make sure your package says RBGH free. Okay, here we go. I needed to blend that one up just a little bit more than the last one because I had I, didn't, I ran out of shredded. I only had the flakes. So I had to make that go a little bit more. It's all sticky and a little hard to work with, but that's okay. Life is sticky. Life can be sticky. I'm gonna pull this out and I just wanna make a word of caution to everybody. The blade is sharp. I don't just throw this in the sink. I actually put it in a spot where I know I'm not gonna cut myself. I'm going to see it and I'm not going to cut myself. Why am I telling you this? Because it's happened. It's happened. I had a blade in the drawer from for this food processor that wasn't uh, stored properly and I ended up cutting myself. Not terrible, but enough to go, hmm, don't let that happen again. Don't let that happen again. Now in my directions, I say get a, a pan that's eight by four. Who here has a pan that's eight by four? I do not have a pan that's eight by four. Don't know why I put that in there. Uh, so this is an eight by eight pan. And you can do a close up on me for me, Caitlin, please. And this is an eight by eight pan. And I probably put a little bit too much coconut oil, but that's okay, it does you good. If you spread it the whole eight by eight, it's just too thin. It's too thin. So we're gonna kind of sort of not double it up, but I'm gonna just do that with my parchment paper and make it smaller. You see what I did? You see what I did to make them smaller like I made the other ones? Okay. And then I'm gonna get my almonds. There we go. Now I could have doubled the batch if I wanted to, but let me get my almonds. Stay, stay on that close up, okay? Um, I have almonds somewhere here in my life. Where are they? Here you go. These are two almonds that I toasted earlier and I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna make six or seven rows, whatever I feel like doing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you wanted to, you also could do slivered almonds and just throw slivered almonds on the top. It'll be a little bit more difficult to cut as you saw me cutting them earlier, okay? One, two, three, four. Remember, always toast your almonds. It makes them so much more delicious, so much more delicious. And there you go. Now you can put this in there. Okay, we're done. You see how pretty that is? You can put this, oh, you can stop there. The, um, you can put this in the refrigerator for two hours and then cut it, or you can put them in the freezer. I'm just gonna put these right in the refrigerator and then I'll dip them in the chocolate later on. I'll dip them in the chocolate. Okay, so that is in, the turkey's in the oven. 
We have one more thing to make for everybody, and that is a salad. I'm just gonna move some things out of our way and get us ready to make our delicious salad. Workspace, really, really, really important workspace. Okay, good. Any other questions, be sure to type them in that chat box. Life is not complete without vegetables. Life is not complete without vegetables. How many cups of vegetables do you think that you need to eat on a daily basis? Type it in the chat. How many cups of vegetables do you think you need to be eating on a daily basis? How many cups? Type it in the chat. Somebody put eight. You will have my heart, Lynn. But tell me, how many do you think you need on a daily basis? How many do you think you need on a daily basis? Five, four, six. Okay. The truth is you really need eight to 10 cups of, that. no, not eight, 10 to 12 cups of vegetables a day, 10 to 12 cups of vegetables a day. And why are vegetables so important? Does anybody know why vegetables are so important? Does anybody know why vegetables are so important? Type it in the chat. Why are vegetables so, so, so important? Vegetables are so important, I'll just tell you, because they're full of vitamins, minerals, digestive enzymes, antioxidants, fiber. Vegetables are life. The darker, the greener they are, the better they are for you. Now this salad, I said that was a spinach arugula salad. You can use whatever you want as your base for your salad. I have some spinach arugula mix. I have some baby spinach from our pizza show yesterday. I have a spring mix. I look around and I say, okay, who's eating dinner with me tonight? And I'll fill the bowl accordingly to who's going to be with us. Now, I have a little bit of time. And if you'd like, who here would like for me to talk a little bit about kale and do a little bit of a massaged kale salad? Who wants to be, if you want to learn a little bit more about kale, I don't have to, I can just throw this aside. But if you wanna learn a little bit about how to prepare kale, put kale in the chat. I need at least 10 people who really want me to do kale, put kale in the chat. If you really want me to do kale, put kale in the chat. Okay, I've got at least five, six. Any, anybody else want me to do, I'll just put it away. All right, got a couple more kales. This is, I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled because I love kale. I love kale, I grow it in my garden. This overwintered, literally overwintered, and this is Russian kale. This is Russian kale that yes, I grew in my garden. This is all washed up and ready to go. And baby kale is easier to eat raw and you don't have to massage it. But if you get an adult kale, what you wanna do, not all of my kale is a large kale, but I'll show you on the smaller, on the larger one that I do have. What you wanna do, the stem is a little harder to chew I strip it, I strip it like so, and this stem, do not throw it away, full of nutrition. I throw it into my smoothies, into my blender. Do not throw this away. And again, I don't have a lot of large pieces to show you the stripping, but what I'll do is I'll lay the kale one on top of the other. And if I do have a stem, I'll strip it out one on top of the other. A little bit of, if it's a small stem, I'll keep it because it'll be soft. Here we go, strip that stem out and just lay one leaf on top of the other. Strip the stem out. You just don't wanna be chewing the stem if it's a larger stem. Just use the, I also saute them with onions. If I'm doing some kind of a, a saute, I'll saute that kale stem in with the onions and then I'll throw in whatever else I'm making with that. If it doesn't have a big stem, I'm just gonna lay it on top, lay it on top. Oops, this one has a nice big stem. We'll strip that out and lay it on top. And I'm gonna show you how to cut this in such a way that it is so easy. Even if you had a big bunch of kale versus this smaller kale. And this kale, it's, it's starting to bolt. 
Do you know what I mean when I say bolt? My kale is starting to bolt. Who knows what I mean when I say that? Does anybody know what I mean when I say my kale is starting to bolt? Are dark green vegetables bad for people who have kidney problems? Someone told me that the Oxalic acid in them can give kidney stones and tumors. Tumors, I don't think so. I, I am not going to speak to that because I'm not a doctor or I'm not a nurse. And I have a strong belief. This is what I'm gonna tell you. This is my belief. And I do want you to check with your doctor or nurse because I'm not one. And this is for information purposes only, okay? This is my belief in my life is that food is your medicine and let medicine be thy food, okay? Aristotle said that. Show you what I'm doing as I'm talking, okay? I'm getting that whole batch and I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna make a big old roll up, okay? Big old roll up. I'm going to bring my fingers like so, so that my fingers don't get chopped. I'm going to hold my knife like I taught you. I'm gonna continue to talk to you, okay? And now I'm also gonna use, back to the knife skills, my entire knife. I'm not just gonna chop down and use one part of the knife. I wanna use the entire knife as I'm going through. Also, by the way, wooden cutting boards are much easier on the knife than synthetic plastics, whatever. Back to, I believe strongly that food should be your medicine and medicine be thy food. Um, drinking lots of water, eating lots of foods that mother nature taught us to eat. Less processed is best. No processed is best. Process food yourself like I am processing. Not to say that you can't go and buy kale, but what's better for you? Purchased kale chips or kale chips that you make yourself? Kale chips that you make yourself. Okay, I'm gonna get put a little salt in there. You see that I did that? I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. A little bit of olive oil. And here's the key. Uh, if you have kidney problems, you need to follow your doctor's orders. I, I don't have an answer for you, okay? With all the oxalic acid, it all depends on what vegetable, I mean, what, uh, sub, what medicines you're eating and all of that other stuff. I mean, taking, not eating. What I'm doing here, not only did I cut my kale into small little strips, small little pieces, so it's easier to chew. I'm also massaging my my kale, my kale, <laughs> my kale with my hands. And the massaging helps break down the cellulose, the light, the outer layer so that it's easier to digest and easier to eat. And you only need to do that for a few moments. But once again, life is messy and I got messy, dirty hands full of salt and olive oil. It's all good. I'm gonna go wash them and I'll be right back. Probably the fifth time I washed my hands with you guys, jeez. Um, go back to basics. Back to basics. What are the fundamental nutritional basics? I'm also gonna mix in some baby spinach and some arugula mix in here. Why not? Throw it all in there. Throw it all in there and then we're gonna make a dressing for this. I have some spinach mixed with arugula. I get this from Aldi's. I don't know why they don't have full arugula. I think a lot of people don't like that much arugula. That's probably why they don't have a ton of it or uh, all of it by itself. So back to fundamentals, drink your water, half your body weight in ounces per day of water. Eat 10 to 12 cups of fruits and vegetables a day, mostly vegetables, mostly vegetables. Take a good probiotic. Take a good probiotic. Take some digestive enzymes. Exercise, stretching, walking, bicycle. Do what, what do you like to do for exercise? Tell me, what do you like to do for exercise? Type it in the chat. What kind of exercise do you like to do on the norm? I, I'm a cyclist. I bike twice a week. That's all I have time for. But every single day I walk. Every single day I stretch because it's fundamental, it's part, of, it's part of life. It's part of our bodies were meant for movement. 
Our bodies were meant for movement. The recipe calls for a um, golden apple and I didn't have any, I just had some gala. So I'm just gonna do my gala, whatever you have, use it. And Tina, quick question. Can blanching kale make it easier to eat? Yes. Yeah, blanching kale can make it easier to eat. Also, when you blanch it, I just want you to know that the nutrition just went right into the water. The nutrition from that kale went right into that water. So I wouldn't throw that water away. I would drink it or put it in soups. Yeah, I cook kale. I cook kale. I, I stir fry it. I put it in soups. Um, but yeah, if you want to blanch it, I don't think I would eat it in salad blanched. Yeah, I wouldn't eat it in a salad blanched, not at all. But thank you for asking me that question. What else did I miss? We were talking about exercise. Gardening, yes, gardening, walking the dog, stretching and walking the dog, good, 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 good. Again, I am not being exact with cutting my apple. I am just haphazardly cutting my apple just because I'm talking and cutting at the same time. They say consistency of cut. You're supposed to cut everything the same exact size. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I don't. I'm a hungry girl. Got to get dinner ready. I got to get food ready. I just don't have time. And, and meditation, making sure that you're doing things. It doesn't have to be meditation, but things that are anti-stress, de-stressing you, taking a walk on the beach, taking a walk in your neighborhood with the dog. What do you do that is that calms you down, that is less stressful for you, that calms your stress? What are things that you do that calm your stress? What are some things that you do that calm your stress? Go ahead and type that in the chat. What are some things that you do that calm your stress? Do you meditate? I do walking, breathing exercises. Prayer, very good, very good, very, very good. Love it, walk the stairs. Even exercise to me is a meditation, a de-stressing exercise, right? Um, I buy myself flowers. I buy myself plants. Uh, these are all things that are de-stressing to me because, you know, I'm busy. I'm not even busy. I'm very focused with my life and determined. Ooh, bad, bad avocado. We'll just do one avocado. That's fine. Uh, I buy the avocados. I store them on my countertop. And then once they get a little soft, I put them in the refrigerator. The ones behind me, I just bought them. They're hard. I'll wait for them to ripen up a little, and then I'll put them in the fridge. But every once in a while, they go bad. It's okay. No big deal. Throw it away. Throw it away. I give it back to the earth. I compost. I compost, and I throw it right in my compost bin. Let's make our dressing. Let's make our dressing. We're going to do any mustard that you want. Any mustard that you want. Hmm. This is a, I got this from Aldi's recently, a whole grain mustard. Dijon mustard works really well. This is about two tablespoons of some kind of mustard. We're gonna do two tablespoons of honey. If you don't want all of the sugar from honey, here is another product that you can buy called Yacon syrup, Y-A-C-O-N. And it has a seven, about, a seventh of the sweetener of honey, of the sweetness of honey. So if you have problems with high blood sugar and you really want a little bit of sweetness in your salad dressing, I could have used this for the Almond Joy bars as well, but I didn't today. So we're gonna do about two tablespoons of Yacon syrup. It's a little, almost, I think it's almost citrusy, almost citrusy. Almost citrusy, and but not really. Mm. I don't normally do that, but this stuff is really good. Mm. Definitely citrusy. And that, it's perfect for salads, the yacon syrup. So we got yacon syrup or honey, a little bit of vinegar. We're gonna do about four tablespoons of vinegar. You can choose whatever vinegar you want. You can even do lemon juice if you'd rather lemon juice. Um, I've got a white wine vinegar I like to use for this salad. You could use balsamic if you want. You could use red wine vinegar. You can also use apple cider vinegar, which is actually super duper healthy for you. It has, it's, if you get the one with the mother, it's full of enzymes. Oh my goodness gracious. We only have about five minutes and I still have to show you the turkey coming out of the oven. 
but this is almost done. Three, and I don't like a ton of vinegar, so I'm only gonna put about three tablespoons. Remember, make things the way you like them, not necessarily what the recipe says, right? And I don't know why I'm measuring, but I'm measuring two, three, four, and about five tablespoons of the olive oil. I have to show you the Almond Joy bars and the turkey. I'll take it out of the oven and I'll show it to you. Just whisk this about, and this is your vinaigrette. You will pour your vinaigrette onto your salad when you're ready to eat it. Otherwise, the acid in the vinaigrette will cook the salad and it'll get wilty, okay? The other thing you could do is get mason jars and put this on the bottom of the mason jar and then put your harder vegetables on top and then your lettuce on, the to um, on top of that. And then when you're ready to eat, you can just dump the mason jar. So there we have it, our vinaigrette. I am, why not? We'll just pour it right over the salad. I'm gonna eat this today and tomorrow. And I don't mind pre-dressed salad. <laughs> That's me. I'm a little on the crazy side like that. I like, who here loves leftover salad? If you love leftover salad with the dressing, put leftover salad in the chat. So there we have it. Our arugula, spinach, kale, strawberry, apple, mustard, vinaigrette salad. I know, way too many words. Let's see how that turkey is doing. And then I'm going to get the almond joy bars out of the, the freezer. In the meantime, while I go and, good, leftover salad, while I go and get those things, I want you to type in the chat, what did you find most valuable about our time together today? What is that one thing that you're just like, Tina, I'm going to remember this forever and I'm going to take this with me. What is that one thing? Type that in the chat. Go ahead and type in that chat. What is that one thing that you're just going to take away and remember forever? All right, here we go. We have our turkey breast. And when you take it out, I want you to buy an instant read thermometer. Why? Because this is the best thing in the world. I want it to be at 160 degrees. And then you're going to tent it with tin foil for 15 minutes and make it go up to 165 and then slice it. This is only at 130. And I can actually feel when I touch it that it's not done yet. So I'm going to put it back in the oven probably for another 15 minutes. Okay, Google, 15 minute timer. Okay, Google, 15 minute timer. So I'm going to put that back in the oven for 15 minutes. And when that comes out, I'm going to slice it up and serve it. And it's wonderful for so, um, not salads. You can chop it up and throw it into the salad so you have some protein. You can make sandwiches out of it. It is so much better than any lunch meat turkey that you can buy. Okay, here we go. We have some Almond Joy bars. Here are our Almond Joy bars. Let's see, what do people find most valuable? Uh, always dressing on the side, spraying the measuring cup. Okay, good. The kale prep and poking the hole in the turkey for the, okay, good. Uh, difference between fat and low. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, full meal can be made with, within an hour, start to finish. Yes. Uh, I like your upbeat and positive attitude. Thank you for sharing. You're so welcome, DC. So welcome. And here we have it. We have our Almond Joy bars. Store them in the fridge. They'll be a little easier to eat, but I just put them in the freezer so that I can get them nice and easy for me to pick them up and show you how wonderful these are and how good these are for you, your family. There's everything wonderful in here for you. So don't be afraid to have a little bit of dessert because life is full of joy. Almond joy, right? <laughs> life is full of almond joy. That's what I should say. Life is full of almond joy. I am so happy to have been here with you. And I do have a free gift for everybody. Caitlin's going to go ahead and put this in the chat. It is my free ebook called the the Joyful Gut Reboot Guide. And it's all about the foundation of health and wellness, all about the foundationals of health and wellness. So it's tinamcdermott.com slash JG. It's completely free. Join me in my tribe on Facebook. I'm constantly entertaining people there. 
and just so that you can be part of my world. I will be back next month here at the Fairfax Library. And uh, the, like I said, I'll put it in the emails. You'll, if you're part of my newsletter list, you will get those emails with the link and the registration link and all of that other fun stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, namaste. Bye for now, everyone. Bye for now. Have a very, very good day. You're so welcome. So, so, so welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you.